welcome back guys welcome to another video from Shomu's biology and in this video quite uh, from quite a long time I'm thinking about making this video and I'm getting many requests to talk about that matter and this is about cot curve and what is cot curve and the analysis of cot curve so let's talk about here now cot curve analysis is you know let me simplify this I'm not going to talk about huge uh, matter about that so I'll be talking about very basic of cot curve and actually quad curve is analysis of uh, renaturation of DNA and what does that mean that means you know DNA is double stranded spiral thing we all know that now those two strands are combined together with different hydrogen bonds now what happens we apply heat to the medium containing DNA those two strands separate right so let me draw here so this is the DNA we apply heat those two strands separates this is the situation very fair now after that once we take that heat out and we slowly add time so time and we take that heat out so we are lowering the heat lowering the heat what happens slowly those DNA start to anneal with each other like they were before and this thing is called as renaturation because once we apply heat to the DNA solution that once they are separated they are, this is called as denaturation of the DNA. Once we revive the situation it is called renaturation of the DNA. So it is denaturation, it is renaturation. Right? Now during this process the renaturation of DNA depends on three important things right now this depends on concentration of DNA in the solution time that we provide those DNA strands to be reannealed and three and third thing is a buffer factor buffer factor now what does that mean you know DNA is having a negatively charged backbone so the presence of cations change the course of reannealing right so the presence of cation is very important and you know in buffer there is a presence of a particular percentage of cations and anions right so the buffer factor that corresponds to the percentage of cation that is present in the solution also matters so these are the three things which is regulating the renaturation of the DNA after the heat denaturation right now for the cot curve what we get to analyzing the cot value it stands for Similarly, the concentration of DNA that is present, so cot in this sense is a simply a value, right? So, concentration of the DNA multiplied by the time taken for the renaturation or provided for the renaturation multiplied by that buffer factor. So, that is the value for cot. So, in this way we get the cot value. So, what this cot value stands for, right? Now, if I put a graph here, how it will look like? It will look something like this, the cot log, log of that cot value here in the x-axis. In the y-axis, it will be percentage single standard DNA that was present before that experiment. Now, after that, what we get? We get something like this. We use three colors here another color sorry okay haven't been using this green color lately so let me use it like that okay so it will look something like this the graph will look something like this now you know all of them start from this particular point where all the DNAs are single stranded. So, the percentage of single stranded DNA you know very high. So, according to your knowledge, the basic knowledge we know, as we go on with time, those single stranded DNA will start to reanneal with each other. And what we will get? It will be the fall of percentage single strand, increment of percentage double strand. Similarly, so the, so the value will fall through the line, right? So, it is, in, it is falling through the line, that is completely simple. Now, what do we know that cot value we are talking about, you know, the percentage of the concentration, the concentration of DNA is very important. If the DNA concentration is higher, it will, the value for cot will be more, 
right and also another thing is also important i have written three things fourth thing is the viscosity viscosity of the medium because if the dna sample that you have taken for the experiment is contaminated with the presence of protein in that case viscosity changes that thing matters but if you take a pure dna sample that thing won't matter so suppose we we just assume that we take the dna sample completely pure right so in that case viscosity won't matter right so what we get the value of cot from this region and that is telling us you know two strands separated using heat now once we start them to reanneal using or giving them time what will happen what is the i mean chance or what is the rate of this annealing the rate of annealing depends on these three things very fair but what is the rate of annealing of a particular sequence for example sequence say g or c or t for example for say the g is present 20 times in the dna sequence c present 10 times t presents 2 times if this is the scenario then what is going to be the case you know if g presents more you can see 20 times in the dna so that rate for reanalyzing of the g will be more right and you know t is present only twice in the dna so the rate or the probability for for joining of this t is less or the rate of joining or rejoining of this t will be less so the rate of any sequence in that dna strand to reanneal it will depend on the concentration of that particular base in the DNA. That is another important thing, right? So if you look at this curve through the different region, I have a color code here. And what this color code is telling us, let me erase it. This color code is telling us a very important site, and that is the top region, this blue region that I have drawn, which is reeling, you know, very, very fast, right? So annealing is very fast here. So those sequence are repeatedly present in DNA will reanneal fast, right? So here we'll find the highly repetitive sequences. On the other hand, after that, moderately repetitive sequence repetitive sequence are started to reanneal and the third case and the, at last you know i mean low number sequences so the sequences we are present in very low quantity will reanneal at last right so you know by looking at this graph about a particular dna what kind of information we can get we can get very valuable information information about their complexity information about the complexity of the dna whether highly repetitive sequence are present in the dna or not right what is the percentage of the sequence that is present in the dna what is the melting temperature of the dna and many more properties of a dna so for that reason for understanding so many valuable properties of dna we actually take out the dna denature it with heat and then we apply uh, uh, some time for it to be reannealed to get the cot value and to analyze the cot curve. And that is the importance of analysis of a cot curve. In a sense, this is a simplified version of what is cot curve. And I hope that's helpful to you. Now, the, the complexity of the organism, remember, the complexity of the organism does not always mean the nature or the type of organism. For example, uh, the number of chromosome can be more in some organism, but DNA complexity can be less, right? So small, tiny organism, it is having very low number of chromosomes, but the DNA complexity can be more in that organism. It does not necessarily mean that higher eukaryotic organism will have higher complexity in the DNA and prokaryotes and, you know, lower eukaryotes are having, uh, you know, uh, less complexity. That does not mean that. That is a different thing. So this is very, very important, guys. Okay. So, you know, that is why the complexity of the DNA and the organism type size does not really matter there, does not really tallying with each other. And that particular, is th particular thing is termed as C value paradox. That means the cot value paradox. That does not mean that if an organism is com complex, uh, it is having more DNA, it is, it is having complex DNA. It does not necessarily so. Remember this, it is a C-value paradox. Thank you.